You ready to call the order here? <clears throat> so um, tonight's the night of reorganization, so I will call the Deerfield Elementary School Committee to order at 5.06 on June 7th. Um, before we get into the reorganization, I just wanted to, this is the first school committee meeting since the tragedy of shootings in Texas, and since then others throughout the nation, I just thought we'd start with a moment of silence to um, move up bringing civility to our, to our nation. Schools have to say, be a safe place for all children. You have a moment of silence in the paper. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so the first call of reorganization is, um, those who have done it before, is that um, I seek nominations for chair. And once we have a chair, the chair will take it from there. So um, I open nominations for chair. I would like to nominate Terry Etchell. Chair. I have a, do I hear a second for chair? Second. Um, any other nominations for chair? Seeing none, I'm going to close nominations. And then we'll be voting on Terry as, as chair. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Right. Those watching at home, that was a unanimous <laughs> four to one. Terry <laughs> 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 may have abstained, but just for Terry. Do you, <laughs> you accept being chair? Yes. I I All right. So, Terry, what happens is I send it, hand it over to you. All right. Uh, and now we uh, thank you, Ken. And everyone. Uh, now we uh, open nominations for vice chair. You want those? I think I've got this. Oh, you've got it there. Um, I, think, I think I got everything. Um, I would nominate Ken for vice chair. Uh, any other nominations? All right. Hearing none, we'll vote for Ken Cutback for vice chair. No problem. I. All right. I'll even vote for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Are you taking notes? Do you want me to take notes? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> You're done. You're all set. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's not it's not part of the chairs. You know, if you want to do it, that's fine. <laughs> uh, now I would uh, open nominations for secretary. Um, and uh, any secretary is um largely ceremonial. Um, there's not much to do. Sign a few documents here and there. Um, I would nominate Erica for secretary. Mm. All right. Any other nominations? All right. Hearing none. Uh, vote for Erica, for secretary. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, and then the rest of the positions are appointed Correct. by the chair. Uh, so uh, Frontier Regional Rep, Mary. I assume you're happy to continue us. Yep. Frontier. Okay. Mary. And the. Uh, Rep to the Collaborative Educational Services Board. Um, Erica has been filling this role. This is uh, a um, every district in Hampshire and Franklin County is appointed to the a board for the Collaborative for Educational Services. I think it's a really good opportunity for um, for new members. It's a good chance to meet people and kind of get on the ground running. So, Annie, I would like to appoint you if you're open to that. Okay. All right. You gotta tell her what she has to do. So that right, okay, <laughs> surprise. So the meetings are it's every other month. Um, they're a couple hours, then they're in person. Um, they're dinner, and it's a good chance to really connect with other people. Uh, and the the board oversees the collaborative, which uh, provides assistance um, and educational services for public schools in um, Hampshire and Franklin counties. All right, uh, Union 38 reps. There are two in addition to the chair, I believe. Um, so uh, this past year, it was Ken as a chair, it was me, and now the third spot is vacant. So is there anyone who's interested in that? Uh, oh, uh, I should explain for new members. Um, when we have joint meetings and we're uh, voting as a, as a group with the rest of the union, the other four districts, every school committee has a few three appointed members uh, to vote on behalf of their committee. Um, so it's at those times we have joint meetings, that person is the voting member. 
Yeah, and everyone participates, but right. there are only three voting members. From and there are times when everyone votes. Yes. To, to make it confusing. <laughs> <And it's, laughs> For big issues. It's logical not to appoint Mary, because Mary gets a voice at the Frontier vote. So when Frontier mm -hmm. and Trudy vote together, she's your voice, she gets a vote at Frontier. Mm -hmm. So you get more voices if you don't know. <laughs> yes. It's the union voting members. Who take yours? Erica? All right, I'll appoint Erica. All right, there's one more spot. Can any, anyone? <laughs> I'm happy to oh. do it. For I'd like to continue because I kind of the chairman of the Well, of the that, I, I actually meant to touch base with you before the, <laughs> if, you, if you would yeah, like to. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, Darius and I were talking about that recently. We haven't reorganized the Union 38 committee in a while, but as the chairman, I kind of need to. You just do need a place, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. okay, you're there. Uh, so I, point. I would be the third. <laughs> All right, I point <laughs> Erica to the first spot and Ken to the second. Okay. Uh, is it traditionally done every year? And it's just. I mean, away. I've always had, we yeah. just had more business as a full 30 than we've ever had in the last two years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the last it's three that, years, it started yeah. with a new superintendent and a business manager. You had to have all these meetings mm -hmm. where everybody had to get together then COVID. So before that, it was like once every. Once or twice a year, maximum. Year. Not even sometimes. Yeah. You know, um, well, with the joint meetings, we would have it run right. right. But, um, but I'm yeah. talking about where there were actual votes. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. No. The history prior to that, it didn't happen often. It happens when there's change in leadership. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. The, if the Union 38 reps, there are three of us. We, we're all set not to overlook in, but everyone Thank participates you. in the meetings. <laughs> so sure, I'd like uh, to stay on as a voting okay. representative Thank, for yes, this one more you. year. <laughs> we appreciate your, your contributions. All right, next up we have the Capital Improvements Committee rep. Ken, would you? I'm happy to continue. Happy to continue. Sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, the Policy Review Committee. Um, Erica, I know you, is that what you did? Yeah, I know there wasn't too much, but hopefully we'll get some something that the Policy Review Committee can do. Yeah, All right. And the Negotiations Subcommittee rep. Um, so, I. Uh, any this would be the person who negotiates um, in these contract renewals. This should be a light year because there's not this bid be anything. Um, so I did it last year. I'd be happy to continue on, but if someone else wants to take that position this year, that'd be fine. Yeah. The only reason that would come up is if there was a problem with a major problem with the current contract. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. So it would it's probably gonna be a non you're right. I mean, nothing's gonna happen with that position, but it has to be in place in case something comes up. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to do that one if you want. If you're taking on chair, you know, I'm just thinking about first, first season. Uh, but if you also are like really into it, then. Uh, no, I enjoy doing it. It was a really good experience, but um, we should only get to share them experiences. So thank you. All right. That's everything, right? Nothing I'm missing, Tom? There's, the, there's a regionalization subcommittee. Oh, right. Which. We which, nominated you for right, last time. Okay. Which I graciously accepted in absentia. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll point you again for the sure. coming of school year. Yes. All righty. Next up on the agenda is review and approve the minutes of May 10, 2022. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of May 10th. 2022 as written. All right, hearing no, any further conversation? Okay. All right, uh, hear a vote on that? If, yeah. You don't have to do, we're all here, right? So you can just do majority, all the vote. All right. Uh, yeah, you don't have to roll call. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yes. I suppose you could announce it at the end so people watching can say, you know. Oh, five yes, that was a five to oh vote to approve the minutes. Uh, next up is the financial statements and the warrants. Shelly? So 12 warrants were signed electronically since the last meeting. The total was $106,670.35. 
I sent you out the expense reports, which was dated through May 31st. Um, if you have questions about <clears throat> particular lines, I'm happy to take them. Uh, I'm looking daily at each expense account at this point to see where we're at with funding. Uh, the school has spent some additional funds because of uh, availability and budget lines. We've had some significant variances in wages for um, teachers and IAs as well as custodial wages due to leave of absences this year. Um, whether they were a full year leave of absence or temporary, that has freed up some funds. Uh, we also had uh, a couple of vacancies for some time period where somebody resigned and we hadn't filled the position yet. So all of that causes changes in our salaries and wage lines. So those are funds that the school is currently uh, looking to spend. So Tina's been working on ordering some things, um, supplies and materials for specific programs, but also school-wide, uh, and then upgrading some office, office and conference room furniture and some outdoor seating for the school as well. Um, and then I did add a note in here. Uh, we are seeing a significant budget balance still available. So uh, it's a suggestion by Darius and I to use some of those funds for capital projects that are on the list currently. The air conditioning uh, was intended to go to the town for a request of 45,000 and it came back, I think, maybe around 16,000. So we could cover the difference of that and do the six classrooms that we had intended to this year, which there's also rebates available right now with Eversource. So we likely wouldn't spend the full 45,000. Um, and then, uh, additional kitchen equipment is on the list. You guys have heard this a couple of times for me now. We are working on it slowly with some grants, um, but there's always more need in there. I know Jeff could easily spend a little bit more money on kitchen equipment this year. So that's up for conversation and discussion with you all. Uh, and then at, at the end of every year, this comes up where we end up with some funds available still at the end because we can't spend them all down in those last 30 days. So. We reclassify, move some things to school choice, and save that money for future use. So that's also an option as well. Um, we wouldn't necessarily have to proceed with any capital projects. We just wanted to bring it up since there is a more significant problem. Um, I think that's it for me. <laughs> Unless there's specific questions I want to talk to them about those capital items. Thank you, Shelly. The uh, question for the uh, kitchen appliances, or what, what are, um, I know we talked about the oven, right, mesh oven. Are there particular you know, items that are coming up? Or yeah, I can pull up the capital list unless Darius is already doing that. Quickly. Um, well, the, yeah, the internet is slow, so it is. So the, there are, I believe, two convection oven, ovens in there currently, and neither of them were functioning properly. The grant that we received covered replacing one of them, so we could replace the other one. Um, I know Jeff has talked to me about switching out, and he has ordered a little bit, but again, not what he really feels like we need. Um, <clears throat> there's some porous surface tables in there that really shouldn't be used for food prep, uh, so we'd like to replace those with all metal tables. Uh, and he really has some good ideas to redesign the line in there so that things just flow different, which requires some other equipment. Um, and then I'm not sure what other big things are on the list. You know, I, can, I think it's going to be, um, let me just join and share my screen. <coughs> Troublemaker. Um, Jeff does have a running list of smallwares. We have ordered some things, for instance, we're getting new trays that have the fair logo on them, so those will be really cute. He's looking to move to um, cups that can be washed for things that have to be served in, in a bowl or a cup instead of paper products. So he's working on some of those things. We can always use more silverware because that tends to disappear regularly. And it's just kind of stuff that you put off and don't really give a lot of priority to. So on top of the larger um, Right. So projects. basically the you know we had the convection oven. Just to see I just want to show it so it's not like you're we're not like you actually have an organized list and I just want to show that. So um, she was talking about the stainless steel the 37 new work tables 
you know, um, and then um, this is the other convection oven. Then we have a convection steamer, new griddle, um, replace cold food service counter and hot food service counter. Those are, you know, the, the service line kind of things. Um, so those are the those are the, the uh, items on the from the kitchen. Um, you can see up, you know, going back to this document that um, we shared earlier in the year. But um, the green is what we're working on now, and then the blue is the stuff that we've done in the past. But um, as you can see, the basketball court renovation is also taking place mm -hmm. on the uh, younger side, the left hand side of the school, in that playground. I'm going to redo those basketball. Oops, and kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm looking at your routine because of your kind of project you were doing. Oh, sorry, Bill and I were working together on that. Oh. Yep, so they're doing the basketball. Like and the soccer, here throwing the bus, okay. so and the soccer nets um, went up on the 5 6 playground. So okay. they were excited mm -hmm. about that. So, uh, do you have an idea about how much money might be available? So, the, the savings from salaries and wages alone is about $100,000 at this point between the various departments. You know, again, custodial, teacher, IA, substitutes. Our substitute line, surprisingly, have not been overused this year. So um, <clears throat> there is a significant amount of money, and that doesn't count. You know, the little accounts here and there that might have a thousand dollars left in them that hasn't been spent yet. So <clears throat> we definitely could move ahead with some of these things. And I, I should explain to the committee the the forty-five thousand dollar request for the air conditioning was submitted to the capital <laughs> planning committee of the town um, somewhere along the line in moving it to the overall spreadsheet that we work off of on that group. It got reduced to the $16,000 that we had previously asked for, for I think the arts room and the one next door to it. Uh, so, and I missed it. And um, we all missed it until the very end. By then, it was already approved at sixteen thousand. So that's where the twenty-nine thousand dollars evaporated from. It wasn't wasn't intentional. It was a, a an error in putting the data into the the um, document that the capital planning committee worked off of. Um, I guess my question would be: Would the air conditioning or the food services be the higher priority? That personally. It, Sounds like health and safety would be more impacted by making some changes in the uh, cafeteria, and we may be able to do all of it, I guess, or potentially. I would try to look at, I mean, it depends on where we are in the queue. So, all the schools are trying to get the Eversource reimbursement. And so, Frontier was in early because it used money, it didn't wait, have to wait for the towns to approve money. So, it's already gotten, we've already gotten through, and the network is already set to begin here. So we already know the process of working through the vendors to get the other source, whatever. But they said right now there's a basically a line um, in order to get that money. But at the same time, we're in the middle of it with the other schools. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, as far as process-wise, we can. Um, I think we should try to do a little bit of both. You know, you're not talking. You already got, you know, like sixteen thousand. You know, roughly a little over a third of the money that we need for the forty-five, and then. Um, you know, I think we should add the other 30 there and then use another 30 or so um, of kitchen materials. And we can prioritize that based off what Jeff, the um, food's director, thinks is the most important priority and what kind of his line of things. If that's, I'm looking at you, but oh, you're the one talking, but I'm also looking at the chair. <laughs> so he's looking at you. Trying to not be in the way. Yeah, there you go. So, um, so I guess that's kind of, you know, or you let it roll right into school choice and then you make the decision later. But, you know, being the summer, um, we're already going to have other money roll into school choice. So this is just going to be a little bit bigger because the amount of, usually you don't have this much salaries at the end of the year. You know, usually, you know, we're unable to find substitutes and how to do, you know, creative things throughout the year. Unable to fill, um, you know, two positions during the school year. Um, the custodial position that we thought we were going to eat up a lot in overtime. That wasn't the case. Um, they were able to do a lot with us. Um, so, you know, that's those are their, those are how those there's bigger shifts in that savings than we would normally roll into school choice at the end of the year. So, um, so I would recommend. I guess I would make a recommendation that we we fund out the AC project 
Um, and then we'll be able to see if we can get that done this summer. It's kind of, the timeline's gotten tight, but, um, and then if they can't do it this summer, we'll have to see what kind of disruption that happens with stone later. Um, and then look at a media food service project, you know, no more than $40,000 or something like that. Um, I'm just throwing a number out there. <laughs> what are the rebates that Evercourt is giving you the <clears throat> dollar amount? So it's a percentage of the actual um, unit that's being done. So for Frontier, can you go up top of your head? So Frontier, I think, got a certain percentage, but if you just look really plainly at it, I think it's like 1250 dollars per so many BTUs, and I have no idea how many BTUs are in. In a unit, but we saved about forty percent, I think, of Frontier. Right. So it was definitely worth it. Right. I mean, we may be able to even do more than the six rooms given the rebates if we right. get everything in. Right. And I don't know if we're already in the line because we, you know, we're trying to get the rebate for just the sixteen thousand dollars too. It's only going to be a couple grand, but you know, obviously we're running for that for just the, the smaller units again because it's based on the two year calculation. So. so. It's, it's worth that it. Means, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. It's not like a, side, right. Yeah, yeah. It's not the little. It's not the little things you cut, cut out of the. You know the, the uh, <laughs> box, box, box tops. Box <laughs> tops. Okay. Yeah, there's real money. <laughs> so Shelly, are you looking for authorization or recommendation? Yeah, I think it'd be great to have your report. Okay. Um, I'm all already coordinated, and Tina is all all in on this as well. I'll put you on the spot. I just want to make sure. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, we're always in conversation. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'd be happy with that recommendation to fund the AC and then food service. Do so. you want to put a formal vote in there? Yeah. All right. So to fund the AC, the remaining AC, the total of forty-five thousand, yeah. and forty thousand dollars worth of. Um, kitchen expansion expenses, uh, uh, capital of kitchen expenses at the discretion of the food service director. You say 40 or 45? 40. 40. And so with that, you'll still be rolling 30 or so out of salaries into public school choice. And there's probably going to be some other savings from other lines, so it's going to be even more than that. So we'll be able to apply that next year too. Shelly and I are having conversations about like. Pre-budget development. Are already on twenty-four. May I? Yeah. Just for a comment, just that I, I think that yes, I would love to take advantage of the rebates because that seems important. But I also, and I also would like to make sure that the food services gets us can mention that safety, you know, is a concern and and uh, energy efficiency is also a concern. But, um, yeah, it's a program. Mm -hmm. in my eye. But I've already got two big, I'd probably do more um, different stuff, but again, we don't want to pass up the opportunity. So, yeah, and there's only so much stuff that we can get and do in, yeah. you know, one time frame anyway. So, like your 40000 is a good amount. That'll give them some good options to exchange out the tables and the, the hot and cold serving station. I know it's really easy to get that back over the <clears throat> So you said yes on a vote on that? If you want yeah, to vote or not? Why don't we just take a vote? Just do a vote, yeah. Okay. I mean, again, it's... I'd make the motion to uh, proceed as recommended <clears throat> with the funding the $45,000 balance on the AC and putting $40,000 towards kitchen improvements as recommended. All righty. Votes in favor of accepting that? The motion to fund the AC and food services. Hi. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Shelly, was there anything else from you? I don't have anything. Okay, and I know you're trying to get out of here to go to your son's game. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you for tonight and all year. Thank you, Shelly. Great. Have a great summer. <laughs> See you when we see you. Okay. Don't embarrass them. No, I'm not embarrassed at all.
right. Uh, up next, we have the principal's report. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll save you all for reading the six page report, but I did add pictures. So if there's any questions, if you had to review that, let me know. But I think the pictures speak better than I can. It looks like there's a lot of fun stuff happening in schools. Lots of fun stuff at the end of the year. We're a little bit back to some normalcy. So mm. it's nice to have those traditions back in place. Not so much on the principal's report, but I was wondering if maybe you could give a sense as to how the school community has reacted to our topic for the moment of silence earlier, and maybe give them some feel for how things have been going or how things went? Yeah, so um, I, I did not hear anything from uh, families or, or uh, parents. We, we did have a good presence out there. We do send a crisis template. It sounds bigger than it needs to be out to faculty and staff, giving them some ground boundaries and parameters on how to talk with children or even just do a temperature gauge in the classroom just to see you know, how things are, are what kids have heard because there's all different spectrums that some kids have watched the news some kids know nothing about it um, some kids, some students need a little bit extra so there's a template that goes out our counselors are circulating constantly um and they're in that kind of that um they're they're waiting in, in, obs in ass assessing students and ready to respond if they need to um, we're available. There's like a crisis team that's available if there's students that need a little bit extra and that they need to talk outside of the classroom. Um, and then, you know, teachers, right? So then there's there's teachers that can be impacted differently. And, and so we check in with each other um, and the counselors are also there for that as well. And so throughout the day, you could hear um, teachers checking in with each other, with, e with each other, just checking, engaging how everybody was and being supportive. There wasn't many students that brought it up um, that it was talked about, and there wasn't much talked about in in the classroom. So I'm not sure how much was communicated for, through families. Darius did send out an email to families too that I think mm -hmm. preempted and um, gave families the ability to to talk with their children. And there was an article, I think, a resource at the end of that to help them. So all in all, I think um, sadly, I guess we moved through it pretty smoothly. Uh, I was saying to another faculty and staff member, this is the third time I've updated this template in the, like the last three years where we send something out so that we can talk with um, children and be able to support them and, and families. So unfortunately, this is becoming kind of a, a norm. And then on the, the security, the more physical and the drills and that kind of stuff, so the, especially the new members, right? we, um, we, we have a, we meet four times a year or more if needed, we call it the four town safety meeting. We host it here at Frontier where we have all four town chief of police and any officers that are connected with school safety, um, our SRO, the state police also come, uh, representing from the Sheriff's Department, EMS, and all four fire departments um, come to this meeting. And we, as I said, we meet four times a year. We review what's going on in every building. We then also, to make sure we're doing all of our uh, lockdown and safety drills, um, those are scheduled and set up and kind of go through, um, including fire. And, you know, depending on, you know, as you remember, the few, few years ago, there was a tragic fire. We talked about what are we doing about fire prevention and, and um, safety for younger students, what to do in a fire. So those kind of things are reviewed. Uh, it, it it cut out and froze. I can't quite hear you, but the computer with the whole group froze. Yeah. It's and of course, I have the hearing problem with your computer where I can only hear your first three words. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we're going to pause a second while I try to reboot that. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
You're muted. Now you can hear us. We got it. We got it. <laughs> I want to know if three years ago you knew you'd be uh, as technologically savvy as you are today. We just extended this thing. Anyway, um, so I left off that we in in Tina started filming, but I should get it for the record that um, we do a series of from that we do our trainings unification drills, uh, teacher training, lockdown trainings and such. And we're trying to set up a program with them to rotate because it's a lot to do every single year, to do certain aspects one year. Like to do reunification every single year, it's a, it's a big time commitment. Um, and so, you know, we're working with them to do that. We also do tabletop exercises um, to give trained administrators to work with police about if there was an incident, what would be happening. Um, and then after incident action as well. So it's not only protection after, you know, even if you have a, an incident where you know no one was hurt, but the students have to be moved. You know um, that kind of thing. Where are they going to go? How are they going to go? How are you going to notify command structures? That kind of stuff. All that stuff is reviewed. Um, you know, with the state police, we kind of kind of leads like a classroom. We all work in groups, and we come up with um, the different concerns and what we have to do. So um, it's ongoing. We meet, um, like I said, four times a year, um, and doing that as well. So. It's kind of in a nutshell how we keep on top of all that and that accountability. Also joining us on those meetings is Deep Deerf Academy and Eagle Brook also on those meetings. So it's kind of a full community about, um, you know, what happens in crisis situations. What are they going to be doing? What can they do to support us? What we can do to support them? Um, yeah. And so that way all, also any units coming here from the four towns also know what to expect um, or going out, um, you know, to expect loans. Thank you. Both yeah. you. All right. Any other questions for Tina? Or Darius. Or Darius. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have public comment. And we've Jennifer Smith been Jennifer Smith waiting for us. Thank you for your patience, the tech difficulties. No problem. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, 
I just want to say thank you for listening to me at many of these meetings, make um, public comments, and I will have one more for this year. As we come to the end of this school year, this is a time to reflect on the year we have just experienced. When I look back at our year as an anti-racist school, I see so many great achievements and so much more we can do. Deerfield is a school where we put language into our handbook to be sure that all our students feel safe, loved, and welcomed. And we can continue to practice acknowledging moments where our most valuable learners are overlooked, picked on, or the victims of others' frustrations. Our teachers looked at their curriculum and added more diverse authors, delved deeper into the full history of our country, and stretched to add more perspectives. And we can continue to notice and correct the lessons that leave out some voices, practices that devalue certain learning styles, or stereotypes that continue to seep into our everyday speech. Union 38 administrators have spent a tremendous amount of time and resources to make the work of culturally responsive teaching and learning a priority. And they can continue to challenge their practices and the systems in our district that maintain habits or traditions that lift the majority and do not support minority voices. As a school committee, you have listened and supported to the work of administrators, teachers, staff, and students. And you can continue to search for more learning and understanding of this work so that you can ask the right questions and push for our district to be the leaders in this work. This summer, I am committed to working on developing a workshop for new hires to get oriented to the work we have been doing for the past two years. I ask you to think about your summer commitment to this work, rereading the alumni letter so that we can have accountability to the commitment we made to them two years ago. Maybe choosing a second pathway or your first pathway if you didn't get to it last summer from the professional development that the staff went through to continue your own learning around the history of racism in our country. I'm happy to have some I'm happy to help support in any way that I can. Yes, we have ac accomplished quite a lot in the past year, and there's so much more to do in order to have a truly equitably, equitable and anti-racist school district. Thank you once again for all your work and for listening. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. All right, and there's uh, no other public comments that I heard about. There's uh, no one in the room, for those of you at home who can't see. Um, so moving on, uh, the next order is uh, unfinished business. Uh, we need to take votes on the uh, policy updates, uh, MASC policy updates to section A, which uh, we had our first read last month, that was on A was non-discrimination, and policy section J, which was admission procedures. Any discussion on either of those? I'd make a motion to approve. The um, mass MASC policy updates to Section A, as presented. Uh, any second for that? Second. All right. All right. Take a vote on approving Section updates to Section A. All in favor? Aye. All right. And hear a motion on. Approving the policy section J updates. So just a note on that, there wasn't there were <clears throat> a couple of minor changes sent out by the nurses. The um, uh, clarity under admissions, um, and it was, I guess it was yeah, six in months red. instead of it was twelve months instead of six months on the physicals or something like that sort. So it was very small things, but it's what moving open the last. Meeting to this meeting, there was an update sent to the school. Board. Anyone want to make the motion to approve or further discussion? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the um, policy section J updates as presented. Thank you, Ken. Second. All 
All right. Uh, no further discussion. I'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That was, oh, for those at home, that was, uh, both those votes were 5 0 to approve the updates. Um, we also looked at last month the foundation statement on anti racism and equity, and we'll be looking at taking a vote for that tonight. Uh, and I was wondering, and I can't remember if we discussed this last time, uh, Darius, where will this be published? Will it be part of the, the school policies? How, how so does that get incorporated? We will put it in our policy handbook, and we will also put it on. Um, added to our anti-racism equity work on our webpage. Uh, our whole website is being updated right now um, and should be rolling out. You're hoping that it rolled out before the end of the school year, but um, just so parents, have, the newness of the school year wouldn't be also hit with the newest website, but um, we're hoping to have be able to update our anti-racism work on the website as well. So um, it'll be put there and, you know, basically everywhere where it needs to be put. You know, I hate to say it that way, but as we find different places where getting that information out um, to the community about um, we don't want to bury it away in some files and we want it to be accessible and, and meaningful. So that's the game plan. Yeah. Any further discussion on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any motion to approve the foundation statement on anti racism and equity? Thank you, Mary. I second that. All right. Uh, hearing no further conversation, a motion to approve. Oh, sorry, a vote to approve. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Yes. Right. Five vote approval. Uh, and we, the resolution in support of the fair share amendment, which was new this month. We did not read it last month. We spoke about it last month. Uh, Any discussion on that? Yeah. I'd be inclined to make a motion to approve the resolution in support of the fair share amendment. All right. Motion by Ken. Okay. Second. All, right. All in favor? So, so carry, oh, I'll, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. carry, I'll send it off to you. Get signed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Uh, the superintendent's evaluation summary. Yes. Can you like speak? Sure, I will. I sent you all and email i believe that um had the uh, summary from bob Halla as the chairman of the frontier regional S school committee and myself as chairman of the union 38 committee um we had received uh the summary document uh, a, a summary of <clears throat> the evaluations that were turned in by 21 out of 25 school committee members in the Frontier, Waitley, Conway, Sunderland, and Deerfield school committees. And uh, what I did was, or what we did was we compiled them and in, into the four primary standards, which are instructional leadership, management and operations, family and community engagement, and professional culture. And there were five ratings that someone could choose from in uh, evaluating the superintendent. They were exemplar, proficient, needs improvement, unsatisfactory, and no rating given if uh, someone felt that they didn't have enough information to act on or didn't have you know enough experience to uh, be able to respond. So um, as you know, I, I completed a chart that showed the summary ratings for each of those standards. And um, essentially, not essentially, basically what uh, we found was that in three of the categories, three of the um, standards, instructional leadership, family and community engagement, and professional culture, uh, either 57.1% or 52.4% uh, of the respondents rated uh, Darius as proficient in those categories. Um, 
close to 40%, or I mean, I'm sorry, 38% rated him exemplar in instructional leadership, 33 one third, 33.3% family and community engagement, and uh, in professional culture, 38.1%. Uh, in management and operations, 57.1% of the respondents found uh, Darius's performance was exemplar. 38.1% rated it proficient. We did have some uh, needs improvement ratings of 4.8% on instructional leadership, management and operations and professional culture, and 9.5% uh, of the respondents um, felt that uh, some improvement was needed. I would point out that the needs improvement scores were largely centered on communications and um, the ability to, I'm not the ability, but the, the need for a little bit more, um, I guess, uh, feedback on mainly issues involving the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, how the community was responding and trying to keep people more apprised. Um, just, just to get a sense, 4.8% is basically one of the respondents. Um, for our committee, the five serving committee members um, did all respond to the to the survey, and uh, the ratings for our committee followed roughly the same pattern as as was outlined here. Um, Bob and I reviewed this, and based on the ratings. Uh, felt that uh, give a re recommendation of um, noting that uh, Mr. Modesto is proficient in the performance of his uh, responsibilities and has served very effectively over the past 12 months. And so we recommend a rating of proficient. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. Uh, so are we voting, looking for a vote to accept the summary? That uh, we'd be here? looking so. for a voting, you know, vote to accept or propose something else if somebody felt it <laughs> the need to do so. But yes, I, I would, I would strongly recommend that we uh, recognize uh, Mr. Modesto's year as as proficient. I'd almost say proficient plus, but that's not what we put in the. Uh, <laughs> It was another very challenging year, um, and it's been a challenging two and a half to three years period, um, which this administration, faculty, staff, everyone in the community, families, students, um, and the overall community have, you know, responded incredibly to, and in large measure, Darius's leadership is, is you know. The bow of the ship that's that we've all been sailing for the last two and a half to three years. So. Being able to successfully navigate such um, totally uncharted territory is a, a mark in and of itself. Mm -hmm. so. Agreed. So, the question, um, so, from the comments that people gave, I was just wondering if um, Marius was interested in going from proficient. I thought the comments that I was reading this year were better than in previous years. Um, I, I thought last year, I mean, it was such a an, an interesting year that people were and it was, I wouldn't call it boilerplate, but they were not as inclined to make comments beyond the obvious dealing with the pandemic. Um, this year, I thought that people, I think, gave you good feedback, um, by and large, across the board. Um, and uh, the, the responses, the needs improvement responses were, you know, you could understand where they were coming from. And I know Darius is continuing to work. and. Tina and all the administrators, um, as they learn the, uh, can't ever remember the name of that software. People, <laughs> what's that? Sorry, parents, no. square. Par parents yeah. Square. 
the parents wear so software. <laughs> so I want to use a term from UMass days, I guess, or something. So um, it's, I, you know, I thought that the comments were good. I thought the the overall quality people have gotten more comfortable with the format that we have. And I know, Ann, you didn't have a chance to to see it, but um, and I was hoping to share the document, but I couldn't figure out how to get the summary, which shows each of this 20, there are 25, 29 total, um, five, nine, 13, I'm sorry, 19 total standards within the four standards that they respond to. And each one has uh, a different rating. As an example, under management and operations, the budgeting was 100% exemplar. Um, and that's in tribute to Darius and Shelley. <laughs> <Show them. laughs> yeah. Take credit hey, for we're it. Team. We're team. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and so uh, unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to share that portion of it without sharing all the individual um, evaluations. And I don't I don't know how comfortable each of the evaluators would be at having their. Their individual ones out there, so. Um, it it was a very good a very good re evaluation, and I think it's a really effective tool that we have that can be shared easily. Thank you for compiling that. Yes, and if you're interested in seeing this, I can try and I'm still working on trying to figure out a way to share it so that the other committees will have that ability too. Um, but thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. There's no further discussion. Look for a motion to. Um, uh, is there any further discussion? Any suggestions? I'm assuming I didn't get a copy of the summary because I wasn't part of the. Um, you didn't get a copy of my memo from. I did not. Um, it, it didn't so come I'm, out I'm till last night. <laughs> didn't come out till last night. So. Oh, she's not on the email. I apologize. I thought I. She's not on my email. Oops. I was uh, rushing. I came back into town about 8.30 or 9 last night, and I was updating it. And then I hurriedly sent it out. My apologies, Ann. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you have a blank copy, too. Just so you know, mm -hmm. it's yeah, here. Mm -hmm. exactly. to be able to add right. put some notes on yeah. Yes, we were trying to figure out how to share just the summary results and we didn't come up with an effective way. Yeah, we might be able to probably load the same idea onto these Google Forms right now. It's not the friendliest. Right. I was trying to get it off of Google Forms into an Adobe format that I could then carve everything out of it that I didn't need. And I in my uh, in my efforts to do that I didn't I didn't come up successfully. Were you able to send it? Yeah. Oh, okay. My apologies. <laughs> Why is she not on? I'll have to look at my emails. You got some summer to figure out how to remember me. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. So I look yeah, for a motion to to approve the uh, summary or or something else. Someone else wants to. Hey, you want to else. assume? <laughs> I'll you would want to have a motion to um, uh, rate Mr. Modesto's performance over the past year as. Um, oh, so we're motioning to rate him as proficient? Well, yes. You have Is to that give it? me okay. a rating, so I have to report to the state. Right. Okay. A motion to. So, whatever you're rating, rating, I'm still going to put exemplary. Right? <laughs> 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 I knew you were going to say that. Uh, no, but, uh, <laughs> Motion to, yes, you can have someone to, to support the recommendation of okay. proficiency. I, I didn't want to. Uh, I like the way that process works, Darius, yeah. just FYI. What's that? No. I like the way that process works. I'm just letting him know because our Make evaluations are coming up too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just put mine in. <laughs> so, motion to. I'll make a motion to accept to the him as superintendent's yeah. evaluation summary. Assign him the rating of 
recommended. As recommended. Yeah. Second that recommended. Erica. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that was 4 0 with any abstaining. Abstention. Sure. Thank you. Um, I Thank think you. next year is going to, you know, we're talking about as we're in June, talk about next year. Next year is going to be a big schooling year. Which, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Miney, we'll talk about COVID in a, in a few minutes, but if we have a, it looks like we're going to probably have a normal school year and there's a lot of things to kind of get back on track. So there's going to be a lot of curriculum and instruction and um, re examining what we're doing and trying to get things on what we consider a normal, a new flow of school year. So as we build in our, um, you know, school goals and strategic plan and that kind of stuff. Um, when you think about evaluation, how we tie them. Yeah, we don't do a good job of tying the two together. In the last two years have been difficult to tie any of that in together. Um, I try to bring that in, in summary, but I do appreciate you guys taking time to evaluate and feel free, as I say, to as things come up, give me um, feedback because it doesn't need to be doesn't need to wait till a year end summary. Um, I tried to I don't want to say I tried to please, but I tried to um, get things done the way um, we work together as a group and, and do that. So. Well, we can't help you if we don't exactly. let you know. Exactly. So thinking, please, right? yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Darius. Thank you. Um, and that takes us right into the DESI COVID testing update. So I, I sent the, the uh, memorandum sent out by DESI because I thought it's you know, just kind of reading through it. Um, people have understanding. So what they've done is they've said that they're going to provide tests, not pool testing, but regular testing for summer programs we already ordered. Um, and actually came in today, stacked in the hallway for the summer programming. So we'll be providing tests for teachers and students to bring home and also for symptomatic testing. So they're not providing testing for next school year. Um, and on top of that, and I put this in my, um, my superintendent's report, this is the summary of this. But as a, immediately, you know, school uh, uh, superintendents immediately said, okay, what is this going to cost us to do level service that we have now? Um, just so we can start, you know, just the planning process, knowing what costs are, and as, even before we start making decisions, is that if you're going to buy the iHome test that we've been sending home for, for free to families, they're $5 a test, and there's two tests in the box. It's 10, bu 10 bucks a box. Everybody who signed up for the test and got those weekly and just stacked them in the closet, they were 10 bucks a piece. Um, <laughs> and... Right now, if you go through combines, it's a, it's a state online purchasing thing for um, pre-approved people. You have to buy, um, you have to buy uh, seventy-five thousand dollars. You have to buy a pallet of these tests, and it's enough tests that we would have to do eighty-three tests a day for the entire year, every day for the entire year, in order to get through all of them. And the tests that we're receiving right now from the state are expiring in July. Um, apparently, they're going to extend the expiration date on them because you can just do that, kind of like milk. Um, you know, you, you just sniff it and still get to go. Um, but no, bad joke. But the so I'm not sure if, if we bought a pallet in September if we could get past December with that. So right now, it's kind of a wait and see with supply and demand. The superintendents are already talking about buying together and distributing. You know, one school will be the host school invoice the other schools and kind of work as that. We also talked about the collaborative. So that'd be something that we go to the collaborative meetings in the future when we talk about them being the purchasing power and then the schools buying off the collaborative. Um, but it's just a lot of schools our size don't need that many tests at once. Um, so we did, you know, as the commissioner recommended stockpile. So we will have tests going into September, um, at least for, you know, symptomatic testing. Um, and then we have to decide from there what we're going to do. Pool testing, again, they're talking between around $5 a test with the company. Um, and so I don't know if they're going to, all those companies have the state bid or not gonna try to look for work. So maybe they'll lower those costs. So we need to see what proposals are gonna come out for that. If that, so basically, you know, and we don't know where COVID is going to be in the fall. You know I mean? We're kind of also reaching the stage where the state's not providing for this because they don't believe that it's necessary to continue the type of testing that's happening um, currently. Um, but they want to leave it open. You know, they're basically saying, if you want to do it, you're welcome to do it. Kind of thing. So we'll see, you know, kind of this, you know, as I said, this came out last week or just uh, late week before. 
um, you know, we're waiting for more information. So it is kind of play by ear. You can't, you know, planning ahead, the planning ahead I'm doing is gathering information and then we'll see where we're at um, to start off the school, new school year. And taking direction on that as well, because there's, you know, I, I did a, uh, last week, the, um, the Office of Homeland Security is doing a post pandemic um, research, and you know, they just, they started meeting with different health officials, now they're meeting with school leadership about what it went well and what didn't go well. And what I expressed to them is it's constantly a snow day. And it, it's what superintendents call, we, you know, the, the stress of a snow day is, are you calling a snow day? Well, you did, Wait, if you did, you know, some of my teachers live in your district, you're not, you're not calling a snow day, what am I gonna do? And that's what superintendents do with every snow day where there's not a foot, an easy call. And the same kind of thing is happening now. You know, what is the COVID information that we're, we're working off of and we're talking with each other and then we also you know our weathermen are different boards of health you know and what is the state saying you know hey check the you know go outside and check your weather and then you can make a decision so you know i wish there was greater centralized leadership or at least um, county leadership about you know how much money should we be investing into this because it is a big investment money wise what is the level of safety that's needed based on the information that's out there because right now we have high case counts, but there's not high hospitalization counts. You know, what is the effect on you know youth and um, you know uh, working you know age people and that kind of thing? You know, what are all those data? And you know, you can go down any rabbit hole trying to find that data on your own. Um, you can find any answer you want. I think if you look, you know, the way the information you provide. So I don't know. That's what I'm trying to work through now is just trying to close up this year. But next year, what is that going to look like? So. Um, Part of it's a wait and see. There's a question uh, just looking at the vaccine clinics and the question of boosters. I, I, I'm not saying I'm asking for answers because you guys are smart to me, but um, just that, you know, uh, is it is that going to be something that we did again? And so this, the state actually met with us. Thank you for bringing that up. It's like I cued you. Um, the state actually <laughs> um, met with us earlier when they before they released this, uh, or the time they were releasing this, the last no day prior. Um, they also said that they were going to try to use schools as the major push for vaccines. The schools that did the vaccination clinics were the ones that had the higher amounts and that they're not getting high levels. Um, youth is really low. Um, I asked them, they needed, I think they need to provide more information of the, of why vaccinations are important for youth because well, as it's ripping through the community, a lot of folks are seeing vaccinated youth having the same effect as unvaccinated youth. And we really need to show the science behind, we kind of, I've kind of gone both ways now that I've been through this whole pandemic because we're on the other end, is that there's just a lot of information out there. Um, I, don't know, I don't think it's in our hands to make good decisions regarding this. Or comfortable decisions, like I don't, you know, I don't know if good, comfortable. But anyway, so that's kind of where we are. If it's gonna be a financial, you know, depending on how much testing we do and how much we provide. I think the other conversation is I have to have conversations with the town. Was the town gonna to be able to provide? So the town of Deerfield is a kind of, is a leader in the area. Um, Carol Ness is, is a leader um, of, of local, leader uh, even by position, but with the local boards of health about bringing in testing into the town and what can we work with the town to share resources on that kind of thing as well. And will there be a testing site in the fall? Um, you know, that kind of thing is all to come up. Um, you know, and you know, is COVID going to be something that's going to be treated like we never went and tested everybody for strep when that went through? You know, is it going to be treated like that if, if we're not having um, the type of cases that are hospitalizations and or kids being wiped out for a week and that kind of stuff? You know, kids are getting very mild symptoms. Um, and many teachers are as well. That's the other group of people we have to look at too. So. So I don't have answers. I just have kind of setting the stage for the next step because we don't have enough information to make decisions about the fall year. I have a question about like what role does uh, nursing play in supporting you to sort of navigate these waters? Um, um, sort of part of your team, so to speak, as you right. Well, we don't have a uh, right now. You know, I work with the nurse. I work with Meg um, Birch, and we have a new nurse leader. You saw my um, superintendent report. Um, who'll be coming on in July, um, and then working with the you know the Board of Health on that. Um, 
that's kind of where the decision is coming. And then when we go to make shifting, we bring the nurses in on that. Um, we kind of try to, you know, plan out what we're doing next and, you know, especially stuff that they're involved with, with testing or, you know, that kind of thing because they have a role in it. So that's how that's those decisions are made. Right now, the majority of those decisions have been made by, you know, it's been either masking and then testing and that kind of stuff. It's either come from the state or it's been a local board of health decision in combination with the school committee. Um, so there hasn't been a whole lot of decisions outside of that. You know, processes and procedures are definitely done with the nurses. Because um, it looks very different. Deerfield looks very different than, let's say, Conway. You know, how do you do, you know, you know follow up to cool testing and Deerfield looks very different than it does in Conway. You know, just because of the numbers and sheer size and what do you do with the students and all that. So, so they have different opinions on how we set up different protocols. I think it's kind of, I assume you must be the same. It affects attendance. And that is a that's a true fact too. And then, what are the COVID policies going to be? Is it going to be any five days still? You know, is it going to be you know, if you're not providing testing, then how do you know? And you know, the difference between a cold and the event. And I, you know, looking at the latest strain, and if the strands um, change, that could change everything as well. But given the current, you know, ones that are going through, you know, most of these students would not be missing school if the symptoms are showing. You know, ones that are getting call, getting caught in cool testing, you know, sitting there with a runny nose that we would have sent to school. We're not, you know, maybe some fatigue, but you know, not enough whether you know. This is mm -hmm. I'm hearing. I'm looking over at you, Tina, to see if you're having any other. That's what I'm hearing yeah. as well. So, but I don't know what's happening <laughs> statewide, nationwide. You know, that kind of those kind of data figures, and that's not. I don't know. I'm hoping that we'll have some more input from the outside on that. Do you feel like there's been a big uptick in um, attendance, in lost attendance? Like, is, as you say, that the, the folks are sometimes sending kids or not sending kids in because COVID and sorry, over again. A lot of, like, it feels like there's been a reduction to some extent of colds and other things, perhaps, or at least, you know, anecdotally. And then I'm just wondering, there's the, the converse of the fact that if anything happens, you know, if a kid shows anything but a totally normal, you know, uh, thing, then they're staying home. I just wondered if it's like, if you're seeing any swings of attendance in when, general. When we first took masks off, we it, there were high amounts of everything else was going on out there, too. So we had kids going home, staying home ill, getting tested, negative tests. Um, there was a one flu that went through one building where I think they had 30 over 30 students out with flu, none of it COVID. They then later on had a COVID outbreak, but that, that was kind of like, um, but you know, at the time there was other, all the other stuff that we were protecting each other off with by wearing masks, um, was, you know, kind of released. And so we saw that I would say the opposite is occurring now, unfortunately, is that people are being sent to school with mild symptoms or they've already had COVID. And so therefore, you know, we're just going to send you to school. And we have symptomatic testing now. So I think that we we um, are screening kids when they come in if they're symptomatic. And I think families have at-home tests too. So they're relying on that. So we're not seeing, um, and it depends upon what you're comparing your attendance to, right? So if you're going to compare it to the beginning of the year where the protocols were totally different, um, then you're going to see like there are, if you're comparing it back way back to a normal school year, our attendance is probably still high. But back compared to where we were with COVID, and actually the DESE guidelines just changed. So we were sending kids home if they were unvaccinated and a close contact for five days, and that just changed their mask wearing. So our attendance um, is increasing, or the attendance absence is decreasing. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> However, you're looking at it. Um, most kids are in the building if they are 
COVID free, flu free, cold free, allergy season. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. Allergies uh -huh. is big. Right. So yeah, the symptomatic testing has been helpful with that. Well, I just know as we've gone through this, the, the question that you asked or the question that we just raised is, what do you compare the attendance figures to? Yeah. I don't yeah. think you have the, the bugs going through or the schools the way they used to. Uh, or we're not having them go through the schools the way they used to when the kids were masked. And I don't, I, you know, again, it's kind of anecdotal, but how do you even begin to try and track right. that? We did that, Darius said, had a stomach bug that went through it. That wasn't our school that hit 30 of them, but we did have a stomach bug that went through. And we had this like major cold that went through that had like all the signs and symptoms of COVID, but probably 10 times worse. It seemed like it took people down longer than COVID itself. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we have COVID now. So it's, I think it's hard. Everything probably falls in the COVID category right now. <laughs> Even if you have allergies, it's like, it's a COVID. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everyone goes and checks. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So, but anyways, so. Yeah. Since we're up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And who knows what three months will bring? September. It's, that's kind that's of true. It's a strain on there. Yeah. Well, it was nice of Desi to let you know that we yeah. helped you out for the yeah. last two <laughs> years. Yeah. You know, she did give hints along the way that this funding yeah. would not last forever. You know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. So, you know, part of me wishes more of a transition period, um, but um, like I said, we're gonna try to stockpile our summer supplies to help us at the beginning of the year, and then we'll see what we have. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right. I mean, if you have to, I mean, you're buying tests, I mean, if you have to buy tests, you know, if Deerfield needs to buy tests, you know, we have some funds that we can you know, do some ESSER money, I'm sure here, but. She'll yell at me for giving things. You look at school choice money. There are funds where you could pull ten thousand dollars get with, you know, a bunch of tests to get you know through several months. Um, this, the, the down part is that the ability for families to really test at home, um, you know, hopefully they, you know, they, they save those extra tests of those weeks they didn't test or when they had COVID they didn't need them anymore. Um, because what was nice about it was you could use it as symptomatic. You could, you could screen your kid in before going to school, or if you got one of those notes that said. Your classroom has it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can screen right then and there, and kind of. Anything. So, um, yeah. we'll we'll look into it. Maybe the town of Deerfield maybe we'll have some we'll work with the town for. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Instead of everybody having them ten on their shelves at home, maybe we have an ability where people can stop by and pick up when needed or something. Or, you know, like renting a library book, except you don't return it. You know, that's a terrible idea. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yeah, keep going. Keep this moving. <laughs> 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 like staring a pallet of the, uh, the, among, you know, the county or the area of school. Yeah, we'll work around it. I actually wrote, I wrote actually a uh, word a letter to our, our state rep saying, hey, it's, you understand? Yeah, they go with it. And she explained, you know, I said, no, but have you looked at combines? We know somebody at combines that can address this matter. And it could be as simple as they contact the vendor and say, we will split the pallet. You know yeah. what I mean? And it could be probably done overnight. I, I just don't, yeah. and maybe it will this summer as soon as the school starts to push back a little bit. Next up on the agenda is uh, edit the school calendar and spring conferences. So you voted a calendar for next year. And of course, after the vote, we discovered that we put parent conferences on the 6th and 7th of April, and the 7th is Good Friday. And that um, while we have normally have a school day that day, it is, um, we did get feedback from teachers and, you know, um, concerns that, um, A, there's certain staff members that, you know, take that holiday for religious purposes, and so that kind of takes away a day they can meet, and it also, you know, those families who are also observant, that might be a day they can't do it, so we really created our own scheduling snafu by doing that and so um so the with the association on that and um asked if we can move it to the 30 and 31st so moving it back a, a week um you know a little bit less time crunch for the, the the spring one but um if um basically the following week the 13th and 14th is um the thursday and friday before break that's mm -hmm. never good 
And I actually think it's not a terrible idea doing the 30th, 31st, because March is such a long, as any teacher would, would, would tell you, it's the longest stretch without a vacation, without kind of breaks in the schedule. So uh, maybe those half days would be okay. So I just need your approval um, to go ahead and move those dates and then I'll update the calendar. You said you spoke with the association. I assume they approved that. Yes, yeah. yes. The association's on board. Now. They, they actually brought me this. They brought me the issue, actually. Um, they discovered it. Um, they got feedback after the calendar was released. Something that I oversaw, and so did everybody else who looked at the calendar. And there's no ripple effect of anything else. No, I mean, so they're just the spring conferences, and we just, you know, we pick a Thursday and Friday, and you know, the week before, the week before, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense when there's a religious holiday that affects so many people. All right. Do I hear a motion to uh, change uh, parent teacher conferences to the March 30th and 31st, 2023? So move. Yes, thank you, Ken. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. It's a 5 0 approval. All right. Reports. Um, this chair has no reports to give on the committee. <laughs> Ken, is there anything you'd like to say? <laughs> uh, this, this chair doesn't have a report, but I, I had a question um, for the committee. We have a school crossing guard. I think we've all gotten a copy of a letter who's retiring after 45 years of directing traffic on the corner of Pleasant Street and North Main Street. And I didn't know if the committee wanted to recognize her in some way. Um, I think Tina's, I won't say anything publicly. Yep. <laughs> What's that? It's a surprise. I know. She doesn't know she's I do tend, yeah, we're, we're, we're recognizing her. Yeah. So I didn't know if we wanted to do anything. So. It's not often you have a 45 year school crossing guard. Yeah. Who has interacted with so many kids. And, Absolutely, yeah, in a really unique way. I mean, it's not not your typical school crossing guard. So I just. Kind of thing where you would make a statement or is it something uh, you would you, actually come up with? The chair could write a letter or we could have a, you have a plaque or anything done or, you know, some type of memento. I don't know when you're doing it, so I don't know how much of a lead time you have. But uh, we are not doing that. We can do that. We have like an elementary school honoring. We have kids coming out in a banner. And yeah. I hope she's not listening. Surprise. <laughs> Hopefully not. I don't see her over there. But uh, um, yeah. So I'd be happy to write a letter if that was what the committee recommended. Supported. If you. Um, we can do, I have access to the different kind of mementos that you can get. Okay. And if the committee just goes in and says, go ahead and do it, we can put something together. And okay, in that time frame? Think. What's that? <laughs> just the tenth of well, no, it won't be, it well, depending on when you want to do it. I mean, obviously, yeah. we won't have it in time for next week, right. but um, long game, we can get that done and then Or we just do we'll talk. Okay. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I think she's, right. I mean, she's someone that would probably do something with a memento on her. So, okay. like, kind of cool. Do you have a proclamation from like the state representatives that we have? That might, you know what I'm saying? Um, like for yeah. certain sort of like things like mm -hmm. this, and obviously this 45 years of service to kids. Retire her crossing vest and hang it up <laughs> in the library. <laughs> could do something with her badge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there may be some kind of a memento that could be on. So, just the top. All so, right. but I don't have any outgoing chairman report of any kind. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Collaborative? Yeah, they're um, a good meet, and I am not, I do not believe that we received, I know to check, but I don't think that we received the report yet, mm -hmm. which I usually send out every month for you. So I will go to that picture. Um, but uh, All right. 
Thank you. All right, superintendent's report. So I did send it out to you. I just kind of just say the highlights that we did get. A, we do have new nurse leader that'll be coming on in July. Uh, Chair Chandler, so very excited about that. Um, you all know all town meetings have passed all the budgets. And um, Donna Hathaway is going to retire this summer. Um, so I have, she's been with us basically, I think she came on the same year as me in 2007, um, but she's been just kind of the backbone behind the scenes, putting all the paperwork together for all the different districts and meeting meetings and so on and so forth. So um, she'll be sorely missed, but at the same time, I'm also just posted that position. So if anybody's interested in that type of role, it's posted out there. It should have been the paper the last week as well. And we'll have to do something for Donna as well. Yeah, Donna will be missed. She's, uh, yeah. We can probably do, you know, that, she's not leaving until August, so we, we can probably do a September. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, anything else anyone would like to discuss? All right. Hearing none, um, I would accept the motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Mary and Ann. All right, uh, meeting adjourned at 6.28 p.m. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you.